just the insight of a Buddha. It's not a small thing. And in the time of the, the Buddha, in that time, even the mention of the word, just saying the name Buddha, was something which gave people goosebumps. And so after a while, the more one practices and more one realizes what the Buddha is and why we're celebrating this day, oh, it's really a big thing. The fact that the Buddha existed in this world and we still recall all the teachings and the uh, example, the life of such a being. Not a small thing at all. And then the Dhamma, the Dhamma which we've heard, which we've known, which we can touch sometimes in our meditation. And that is just such a panacea for all of our ills and worries and concerns. I mean, look, um, uh, poor old Venerable Chanda in a little house in, uh, in Oxford, uh, just you know, struggling to survive and to looking at this great, this huge project <laughs> around a company in the future. That can be just very, very um, daunting to somebody. But then you have the Dhamma in your heart and the Dhamma puts everything in perspective and it becomes this wonderful, beautiful project. You know, it doesn't matter how many difficulties you have, that it will succeed. And just knowing that much, knowing that Dhamma of, of how things work, it means you're not doing this thing from a worldly perspective. It's from a, a spiritual, a dhammic perspective. It solves so many problems in life. And then of course you have the Sangha, even though you're staying in uh, this little house in Oxford by yourself, it's only a temporary thing. And you still have that contact with so many good monks and nuns throughout the whole world who are supporting you. And if they can't actually support you by being there, supporting you by coming on the internet and joining in the celebration, even though I live on the other side of the world, still, we're connected today. And so that, that Sangha, the power of it, these are people who are wearing the robes of a Buddha. These are people who are following in the example of a Buddha. People who are realizing the Dhamma and teaching the Dhamma, which the Buddha first found. These incredible, powerful concepts. So to take refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha is affirming either a small amount of confidence or a huge amount of confidence in what is the, the triple gem, the jewel of Buddhism. And it's a very positive thing to see that. <coughs> and the precepts which come afterwards, it's just a way of remembering, just not doing anything which harms another person, not doing anything which harms oneself. I call those the two precepts for those people who have trouble worrying about five or eight or even more precepts if you're a, a monk or a nun. But those two precepts was basically what the Buddha taught his son, Rahula. Don't do anything which harms another being. Don't do anything which harms yourself. From there, all the five precepts and the eight precepts, they all come from those two. And the 227, 311, for bhikkhunis and all the other precepts which exist in the world, all come from this wonderful non-harming oneself, not harming others. It's a beautiful lifestyle. I can't see why people don't take the precepts. If you understand their benefits and their power, it becomes just ordinary. It becomes obvious that these are the things which one should live one's life by. One will make mistakes sometimes. But those mistakes, when I break a precept, one just realizes, oh, I'm still learning. I make mistakes, I do need to grow some more. So you don't uh, teach it as, oh, I need to be punished, I'm a terrible Buddhist. No, we take those precepts as training vows to try and be better and better and better every time. And you'll find like, like myself and others have found, so the more you take the precepts, the more you keep them, the more you see their benefit and their beauty. It's like a privilege to actually to entrust them into your heart and keep them there. And it becomes after a while just natural. You just basically you can't 
not keep the precepts. So you don't want to you don't want to deceive anybody. You know who you who's your friends, your companions. You don't want to lie. You don't want to sort of take alcohol or drugs. They're not necessary. You can be more than happy enough without any of those things. You're not going to kill animals or or steal from people, and and uh, you don't want to sort of commit any sexual misconduct. You don't need to anymore. Instead, you live this beautiful lifestyle of virtue. And the longer you keep that virtue, you get what the Buddha called the uh, Anawaja Sukha, the faultless happiness. The fact that you look at your conduct, you haven't har harmed or hurt anybody. You kept your precepts. You're virtuous, you're good. And that gives you so much happiness. So much joy just coming from that. So it's, a, it's an increase in the, the joy of life by keeping precepts. Let's try it and see. The Buddha taught these things for the happiness of all, all people and all animals and all beings. So why not give it a try? So usually at Waisak time or any other holy day, we keep these precepts just at least for today, just to check them out. And you always see that it makes you happier and it also makes you more strong inside. You're not going to be a prisoner of desires. You're going to be free from desires. And that really gives you a huge amount of power and happiness and joy. <laughs> That's why we keep the precepts. Make sense? Very good. So would you now like to ask for the precepts and then I will, I will give them as my gift for you. So um, do you know how to do that, Tint? Would you like uh, any more instruction? Um, I'd like to follow what Ajahn Brahm uh, uh, said and I will follow. I hope people can hear me. Yes, can oh, hear. Thank you, Ajahn Brahm. Do you know how to ask for the... Because you have to start, Tin. Um, thing. So you'll ask for the three refuges and the five precepts. Oh, yes. Uh, may I start with Pali as much as I could? Um, oh, okay. Good, good. Um, Hambandi, Sisra ni nasaha, Binsadilan, Tamaya Sami, Anod Gahankatawa, Silan data me bandi, do DMB, ham bandi, Cesar and Nasaha, Binsadi land, the Maya Sami, and no Gahanka Dawa, the land data me bandi, do DMB, ham bandi, theater and Nadaha, Binsadi land, the Maya Sami, and no Gahanka Dawa, the land data me bandi, Ama bandi, Dia Jambram, I uh, make a, a refuge on Buddha, uh, Buddha, uh, Dhamma, and Sangha. And please, may I have five precepts? And please, may I have five precepts from you? Thank you. Very good. So I will begin by chanting the Namo Tassa in part, it's homage to the Buddha. I will say it three times when I finished, then please use, repeat the Namo Tassa three times. Namo tassa bhagavato alahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato alahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato Alahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. 
Buddhang Savanang Gachami Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhammang Savanang Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sanghang Savanang Gachami Sanghang Saranam Gachami Dutiampi Budhang Savanang Gachami Dutiampi Budhang Saranam Gachami Dutiampi Dhammang Savanang Gachami DTMP Dhammam Saranam Gachami DTMP Sankhang Saranam Gachami DTMP Sankham Saranam Gachami Tatiampi Buddhang Savanang Gachami Tatiampi Buddham Saranang Gachami Tatiampi Dhammang Savanang Gachami Tatiampi Dhammam Saranam Tatiampi Sankang Savanang Gachami Tatiampi Sankham Saranam Gachami That completes the taking of the three refuges. I will now chant the five precepts. As I chant the first precept when I finish, then please you repeat it. Then I do the second precept and then you repeat that until we get to the fifth precept. Now why don't you take these five precepts, the very minimum, please keep them for the next 24 hours. Even better, try to keep them as much as you possibly can. And if you do make a mistake, just remember that you made a mistake, acknowledge it, forgive it, and learn from it. That's all. So little by little over your life, those five precepts will become stronger in you. That will become almost automatic. It's something which you keep because it creates peace and happiness for you and trust and fearlessness for all the people and beings that you live with. Now the first piece it. Panati pata we ramani sikapadang samadhyami Panati pata we ramani sikapadang samadhyami Adinadana we ramani si kapadang samadhyami Adinna dana we ramani si kapadang samadhyami Kame sumi chachara we ramani si kapadang samadhyami Kame sume cha cha be ramani se kapatam samadhi ami. Musa wada we ramani se kapatam samadhi ami. Musa wada we ramani se kapatam samadhi ami. 
Sura Miraya Maja Pamadatana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhi Ami Sura Miraya Maja Pamadatana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhi Ami so that completes the five precepts. Now for those of you who wish to do further renunciation, further virtue and simplicity of today, we have the eight precepts. And the eight precepts differ from the five precepts. In that the third precept becomes not refraining from sexual misconduct, the refrain from all types of sexuality. We also add the sixth precept of not taking any solid food in the uh, main food in the afternoon, evening or night time. We only take our main meal or breakfast or lunch after dawn and before midday, the solar noon. And there are other things one is allowed in the afternoon or evening, things like juices and tea and stuff. But I'm sure that uh, Venerable Chanda will be able to give you more information on what's allowable. And we also have the next precept of living a very peaceful day, not dancing or singing or listening to radios or entertainment or TV, not wearing cosmetics or uh, jewelry or things which uh, take away from the, the honesty of this body and its real truth. And lastly, we use the precept of not using luxurious furnishings, such as luxury seats or very big um, beds to sleep on. Simple things we use for today. And those become the eight precepts which are traditional for Buddhists to use on holy days like Waisak. A little bit more simplicity in our lives, just so that we can appreciate that so much more in our life just complicates our lives more and just takes away some of the simplicity. So now I'm going to go through the eight precepts, the whole eight, and repeating some of the ones which were in the five precepts. So those who wish to take the eight precepts in a very limited, very uh, uh, minimum, at least till the dawn of tomorrow morning. Panati pata viramani sika padang samadhi ami. Panati pata viramani sika padang samadhi ami. Adina dana vera manisi kapadang samadhi ami. Adina dana vera manisi kapadang samadhi ami. Abhamma charya vera manisi kapadang samadhi ami. A Brahma Charya Veva Mani Sikha Padam Samadhi Ami Musa Vada Veva Mani Sikha Padam Samadhi Ami Musa Vada Veva Mani Sikha Padam Samadhi Ami Sura Miraya Majapamadatana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhi Ami Sura Miraya Majapamadatana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhi Ami we call a bojana where a mini sika padang samadhi ami. We call a bojana where a mini sika padang samadhi ami. 
Naja Gita Wadita Visuka Dasana Mala Ganda Vilepana Dharana Mandana Vibhusanatana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhyami Natcha Gita Vadita Visukatasana Mala Ganda Vilepana Dharana Vibhusanatana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhyami Ucha Sayana Maha Sayana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhyami Ucha Sayana Maha Sayana Vera Manisi Kapadang Samadhyami And that completes the eight precepts. So Please keep them not as just a ceremonial thing, but find the meaning in them. But it does simplify and keep away a lot of difficulties and makes your life more happy, more joyful when you don't turn on TVs or um, internet uh, to, for entertainment. You find that you have more energy for meditation, for listening to the Dhamma, we're doing so much more in this world, we become more real. And again, that sometimes those five precepts and eight precepts, they're treated as just like a little ceremony, ceremony which you do. And the stories which I tell, first of all, the Thai story, when after leaving Thailand and going to the West, and I went to visit and I saw some customs had changed. I saw that some people, when they were taking the five precepts, had one finger down. Instead of the five fingers, they only had four fingers up. And I asked, why are you doing that? And they said, oh, because today I'm chanting every precept, but today I'm only keeping four precepts. <laughs> I never asked which precept they were breaking. <laughs> And of course, later on in Thailand, I saw people when they were taking the five precepts, they're doing all the chanting, keeping two fingers down. <laughs> That's not why we take precepts. If you can't keep them, then just no, don't say them. And another place where I went once, I heard that some people were keeping 13 precepts on Waysak Day. And I'd never heard of the 13 precepts before in my life. And I, they explained them to me. The 13 precepts on Waysak Day were you determine the eight precepts in the morning, and at lunchtime you change the five precepts. So you have eight plus five makes 13. And again, that is just cheating. It's not taking things seriously. Because the hardest precept for people to keep of the eight precepts is not eating in the afternoon. So please keep those, and they give you happiness and joy. And don't criticize others if they cannot keep them. And if for some reason or another there's some precept which you cannot keep for medical reasons, then just determine the seven precepts, or the six, or the four, whatever you can do. But be honest about it, and look at these as an inheritance from the Buddha himself. I encourage people to keep these precepts. So don't look at the inheritance which you, you get from your teacher as something which is to be disregarded and not valued. And see if you can prove the truth, the keeping precepts, being honest and truthful and upright, brings so many benefits to you. In Thailand, I was always taught at the end of giving the precepts, always to do this little chant. Which I'm now going to do for you. Imani pancha cha atta cha silani sikipadani silena sukating yanti silena borga sampada 
สิเลนันนิพุทิงยันทีทัสมาสิลังวิสุดาเย which means these precepts they lead to a happy rebirth to a happy destination they lead even to wealth and and uh, success in life and they mostly they lead to nibbana to cessation so please purify these precepts train in them and see if you can realize they bring you so much peace and happiness And even physical comfort. That's why we have these precepts as part of the Eightfold Path. Very good. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> sadhu. Yeah, <laughs> have a lot of fun. That's so wonderful, Ajahn. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate the fact that you came twice to our ceremony and enriched it immeasurably. And I know that it was very precious and very special for many, many people, myself included. And uh, I appreciate the extra sacrifice and giving that you performed by, yeah, interrupting your ordinary schedule and the time you could be meditating to share and to give the gift of dhamma. So thank you. It's very precious. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. My friendship with the Ahajaha. Very good. Thank you, Ajahn. Ajahn, could I ask one more thing, just because I'm a bit cheeky? I'm just curious. What's that thing on your wall? It looks like a bear. On the wall. Just there on the shelf. On the shelf. Yeah, it is a. It is a bear. It is a uh, like a teddy bear bear. Can I oh. Bear, no? Sorry? Sorry, I can't hear anything. Yeah, show me. Yeah. I can't actually hear you anymore. Oh my goodness! It's Achen's mic, venerable. It's not your sound. Oh, okay. It's what they call in Australia <laughs> a drop bear. A drop bear. Yes, it falls from trees, <laughs> but only on English visitors. <laughs> It was a bit of a joke from oh. earlier, but it's it's a nice little bear. It's very nice. Very good. Hello. Excellent. And it's Hello. also a Buddhist bear. It goes sadu sadu sadu. Oh, very nice. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. Please have a cup of tea, everybody, and bye bye. That's exactly what we're going to bye, do. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye bear. Bye Holy bye. Bear. Bye bye bear. <laughs> Is bear it all rain? So it ordained, yeah. It just, it's um, it keeps the precepts. Really? It keeps, yeah. Doesn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. Poor thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful yeah, day today. Thank you so Very much. Very good. Bye. Bye, bye, Ajahn. Bye.